Welcome to the F Word. More than just meat and two veg. I've got a restaurant serving 50 diners, and all the dishes on the menu are things that you can cook at home. And to prove it, I've thrown all the professional cooks out of the kitchen and replaced them with passionate amateurs. They're all fucking burnt. They're all burnt, my man. We've fucked so many bats so early, we've run out. Each week is a different brigade, and they better be bloody good because we've got 50 paying customers. You can't just shout, James, oil, Gordon, oil. I mean, next week, ask me, wipe your fucking ass. If they don't like it, they don't pay. It's as simple as that. For the last three hours, yeah. you would be calling me mate. Gordon. Gordon. James, I'd be greatly appreciated for the next 20 minutes. Gordon. Gordon. I'm not your fucking mate. And I face some of my toughest critics yet. Taxi. Gordon. On your bike, son. <laughs> <laughs> What a muppet. <laughs> Fucking hell. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you, Will? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Gordon, James, good James. to see you. And you, mate. And this is... Stephen. Steve, thanks for shaving. Richard. <laughs> Richard, how are you? <laughs> Welcome. The most important thing about the food tonight is straightforward and easy. Mm -hmm. But the real key is cooking for 50 diners. Right. Yes. Yeah. And if they're not happy with the food, they've got the right not to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That makes you look stupid. That's mm -hmm. my reputation going down the fucking pan. That's not going to happen. You know, I don't care, quite frankly, whether you hate my guts, but between now and 11 o'clock, so I just want it right. Yeah, nothing more than that. Yeah, yeah let's go. The starter tonight, it's a very simple seared crusted tuna with a watercress salad. OK, guys, here we go. Richard, James and Steve. Now, you all work in the city, yes? Yeah. You all handle pressure? Yeah. Yeah? Now it's time to fucking prove it, yes? First order. Four covers away, table four. Four seared tuna, four sea bass, four apple donuts. Yes, yes, yes. chef. Thank you. The brigade have been shown how to make the starter, but to ensure they know what they're doing, I'm going to run through it one more time. Yeah? Goes in the soy sauce first, yeah? That starts to season it, yes? Then from there, we get our wasabi. We brush it on, all over. Then, get your seeds and sprinkle your seeds over there. We've got a sesame seed crusted loin of tuna. Pan's really nice, so it'll sear it and yeah, not right. boil it, OK? You focus on the tuna. Yeah. Nothing more. Turn that round. See the colour of the seeds. Oh, right. like a nice toasted colour. So, watch. Not too thin. Nice slices down. Look at that. If all that tuna goes out like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. I can guarantee we'll have 50 customers. Right. They'll be paying for that. Now, let me ask you a question. All of you. Yep. Yeah. Now, you may be from Essex and fucking tight and too interested in fucking drinking. However, would you pay for that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would. Listen to it. That's searing the tuna in. Yes? Mm -hmm. What's the matter? The olive oil bottle is... Lift it off? Melting. Oh, oh, fucking fucking hell. hell. Um, yeah, Everyone on that stove is fucking piping hot, yeah? If we do it again, the whole fucking place is going to go up in fire, OK? You guys work under pressure each and every day. Get organised, yes? Gordon, ripping it to bits, it's nice. It's because it's cooked to fuck, that's why. In the bin. Fuck's um, sake. I need two more seconds, olive oil. two seconds. What do you need? More olive oil. More oh olive oil. Come on, God. guys. Um, stop, stop, stop. It's burnt, my man. If you just follow me, yeah? yeah. And you mm. ask me questions, I'm there with every step of the way that you'll go through. Okay. But. You know, quite frankly, that's nearly 20 quid's worth of tuna in the fucking bin, yes? So, start again. Yeah. Salad away, please. Yes, because that's going to be like a fucking limp dick. Let's clear down. We'll do the whole fucking thing again, yes? My name's Richard, and I'm a greedy bastard. Therefore, I learned to cook. I'm half Italian, so I tend to cook a lot of Italian food. My name's Stephen. I enjoy cooking Thai, Japanese, classic English dishes with like a little twist, you know, maybe a bit of horseradish in the match, just to flare it up a bit, you know. My name's James. I can't see the stress in the kitchen being any worse than what we were already used to. I get called a prick all day long, so Gordon Ramsay calling me a prick ain't really gonna affect me. <laughs> being in a pressurised environment isn't anything new to any one of us. It's got to be done, it's got to be done there and then. And if you make a cock up, it can be costly. As long as Gordon Sir Menace says, 
you boys have done a good job. I'm proud of you. That's going to make me happy. I think we'll pull it off. We're from Essex, so clearly we're better than everyone else. So, um, yeah, we won't be a problem. All we've got now is four portions each to do, that's all. Watercress leaves, bean shoots in there, yeah? Some coriander, yeah? Spring onions in there, yeah? A little bit of dressing, yes? Right. Add a touch of ginger, honey and apple? sesame oil dressing and place it on a bit of thinly sliced radish. Because it's so thick, yeah, what we'll do is we'll put two nice slices on there. Now, are you happy with those? Yes. Yeah, because I am, they look yeah. fantastic. Table okay. four, go please, Thanks. yes? Clear down and start again, yes? Okay. Come on. Yes, yes. It's a stunning fucking beauty cooked tuna that has to be served properly, yeah? Come on. Let's go. Clear your shit down. Hello. Hey, big boy. Yes. Your cutters. That's it. Away from the hot plate. We may be slow, but at least the food's going out looking fucking fantastic, yes? Yes, chef. Come on, guys. Place up. Forget the mate, guys. Gordon, yes? Sorry, Gordon. Fucking hell, guys. We're not down the fucking boozer now. Let's go. Service, please. Wait, wait, Last chef. table, yes. Thank it's, you. Uh, both hot, yeah. Well, on your back. Go. I don't like fish, but this was pleasantly surprising. I, I loved it. I love the sesame seeds, and on the bed of mooli, it gave it a nice crispness. So I'm very impressed. Okay, come here, guys. Here comes JB with the results. Obviously slow. How many customers are going to pay for their starter? It's still very good news. Everyone. Everyone. Excellent. Everyone is paying. Yeah, that's fucking good news, yeah? What's not good news for me on a personal front, without the customers known, is what went in the bin. That's nothing to be proud of. However, well done. Now, that doesn't mean to say we've got to start pissing our pants and no. fucking up the sea bass, because 50 customers can refuse to pay for the bass. Yeah. It's a good start, but yeah. it'll get fucking harder. Let's get it. Next on the menu, a delicious sea bass with sour sauce. It's easy to cook, but will it be too much for the brigade? James, at least come back and sing the fucking thing. Yes, yes. Because right now, this whole fucking thing's on my shoulders. It's time to get to grips with my pigs. <laughs> and I get some expert help to judge Slebsy Chef's recipes. Right, Ainsley, get your big fucking chops in there. the F word. Tonight, the Brigade are getting a taste of what it's like to be a real chef. And believe me, it's not about ponceling around, launching fucking cat food or washing up liquid. Mark Pierre White, my ex-mentor, is actually judging the Daily Mail dog food competition. How fucking sad is that? They're asking readers to send in their favourite recipes for homemade dog food. It's official. Celebrity chefs have clearly gone to the fucking dogs. Pathetic. <laughs> So I'm looking for dogs. <laughs> Ranging from short, fat, dumpy little sort of grunters to sort of... I can't of... resist. I'm entering a recipe into the Daily Mail competition. I just can't decide whether it should be one of Gary's, Ainsley's, Anthony's or Marco's. So I'm going to get the four dogs to make the decision for me. And I want the dogs to look like the chefs. <laughs> just looking at his eyes, that is definitely Ainsley. Hey! <laughs> well, he's definitely docile. Is he stupid? Of hit rock bottom. Right. My ex-mentor, a guy called Mark P. White, is now sort of a chairman of sort of <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that's it. Yes, that's Mark. He okay. can be here. Hello. Cool, dear. Hello. What about Anthony? Well, he's certainly fucking ugly enough for Anthony, you know that. Look at that face. Spiky hair, oh. slightly grey, bit of a six-pack going on. That's definitely Gary. Thank you. Now, where's the kitchen? This way. Downstairs. Each dog is going to dine on one dish taken from their celebrity chef's cookbook. And I've roped in some of the staff from Batty's Dog's home to do the cooking. Pork chops with apple tart topping. Yeah. I'm not too sure what the dog's going to make of that one, you know. What is that in there? Cheesy chicken gratter. Well, it looks like vomit. We are in a dog's home. First time I've actually seen one of uh, Waz's recipes actually put together. Let's hope the fucking book didn't sell that well. So, uh, pork chop, Chester chow mein, tuna with basmati vinegar, the fucking, what is that boat thing? Cheesy chicken, gratin, crunch. Crunch, yes. 
judgment time. Which chef's recipe will I enter into the Daily Mail pet food competition? The winner will be the meal wolf down in the fastest time. Now, gentlemen, please enjoy your dog's dinner, yes? Be careful when you eat it. Don't slubber, yes? Anthony, apart from being the fucking ugliest, try somehow to keep the food on the plate, OK? Let's cut all that bullshit French crap out. Mark and Pierre White. Mark, Peter White from now on. We're in South fucking London, so we keep it real. This is the confit of tuna with a pepperade and a balsamic vinegar dressing. Happy with the cuisson, nice and pink? Right, Ainsley, off we go. Come on, get your big fucking chops in there. Right, Gaza, let's go. Free pork chop with the apple pie topping and off we go. Excuse me, hello. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Anthony, sit nice, please. And just try to look happy for once. Cheesy chicken gratin crunch. What the fuck were you thinking about when you came up with that idea? As time ticks by, all the dogs are tucking into their grub. Well, all except one, who's turning his nose up at the posh nosh. Please, eat some salad or something. Anthony, come on. I'll leave you in peace. Eat your dinner. Anthony. Gary's pork chop isn't exactly being wolfed down. Marco can't keep his food on his plate, but Ainsley's chow mein, on the other hand, is going down a storm. And it's hard to believe, but Waz's chicken brick has been rejected outright. Ready, steady, munch. Eat! Ainsley, you have the best and the fastest dog's dinner in town at 1 minute 35, and, well, Anthony, I always knew it. Not even a fucking dog would eat your food. <laughs> Chicken shredded, 175 grams. Egg noodles, 100 grams of bean sprouts. Yes! Ainsley, it's official. The dogs gave your recipe the paws up. So I'm sending it to the Daily Mail dog food competition. Let's see what Mark and White thinks about it. Fucking good luck. I think it's time to do something to show these celebrity chefs enough is enough. So I've decided to set up a celebrity cookbook amnesty. Send me all the celebrity cookbooks that you think are crap and I'll dispose of them. Next. Of course, I want faster, yes, and better. Yes, chef. Imagine 50 customers paying for the fucking sea bass as well as 50 customers paying for the starter. We're two thirds of the way there, if that happens. Right. Come on, big boy. Chuck, you that? Shall I can do my properly? No, I told you there's a spider there. Right, okay. Yeah. Properly out. Watch me. You've really got to watch me now, yeah? Centre of the plate, again, stay nice and tidy. Yes, so easy. Time for the main course, a delicious sea bass in sorrel sauce. Sea bass, for me, absolute delicacy. The flavour, not just of the flesh, but the skin is extraordinary. Fill it. Come down the backbone, nice long strokes. Every time I fill it a sea bass, it's a certified pleasure because they're extraordinary fish. Look at it, absolutely beautiful. Three nice portions, score that skin. And the beauty of this fish is that it's so robust, but so delicate in flavour. Sauce. Knob of butter. Shallots. Salt. Pepper. Sweat down the shallots with no colour. That's absolutely crucial. Vermouth. Sea bass is very sweet and rich, so therefore we need a really nice dry white wine to find that balance. Reduce. Fish stock in. Reduce. Cream in. Bring it back up to the boil. Sieve. Sorrel. The flavour it gives to the fish sauce is extraordinary. It's peppery, a little bit like roquette. It also has this really nice acidic tanginess to it. Into the cream, just to infuse. Lovely. Hot pan, olive oil. Season the bass. Salt, pepper. Just before the olive oil starts to smoke, sea bass in. Skin side down. Turn it over. And just baste over the bass. Keeps that skin really nice and crispy. Broccoli. Cook it for about two and a half minutes maximum. Drain. Still got a really nice dark green colour. Sea bass out. You can hear that skin cracking away. The soil has done its magic. The crispy skin of the sea bass, the real earthy flavour of the broccoli, and then this wonderful peppery, vinegary sauce. The perfect way of starting summer. Delicious. 
Sea bass with sorrel sauce, done. Don't burn the fucking bass, OK? Nice. Two minutes till it starts to brown. Yeah, know. nicely coloured, yeah? Okay. Just touch the sea bass on there for me, yeah? It's too cooked. Yeah, don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing no, at no, all. No, 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 no. The bass is way overcooked. It's going to take three and a half, four minutes to cook maximum, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Start again, yes? Yeah, come And don't flip that fish until there's a really nice golden brown bin, bin it. Put it Serve this, please. Put it back in your bowl and put it in with. Oh. Fucking hell, what's going on, guys? Fucking hell. And you're not here just to spectate and fucking no, go back not. and tell yeah. your mates what a hard on you had. Let's go. Yeah? You've got to get in there, you know that. Yeah. Nothing fucking difficult. No. Let's go. Fucking hell, burn my hands to shit. Right, Steve, just for your info, it's the third time in this table. It's your first table. Right. We've only sent two tables. Right, right, okay. Both your sea basses have been cooked to fuck. He's looking all right, mate. Yeah. Can you stop calling me fucking mate, yeah? Yeah? yeah. Gordon's fine, yes, yeah? Good. Thank you, James. Yeah, and if I give you respect and call you by fucking James, at least call me fucking Gordon. Yes. I, I don't, I don't mind, him. but fucking mate, forget about it, yeah? James. Yes. At least come back and send the fucking thing. Yes, chef. Because right now, this whole fucking thing's on my shoulders. Sorry, chef. And if you're standing next to me, with me, it makes me feel that you care about it. Yeah? Yeah. Do you care? I don't care, mate. Well, fucking I show me care, something chef. then, yes? yes? Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. Mate. It was my first time ever having sea bass, so I was impressed. I liked it. And I'm really not a fish eater, so for me to say that is really... You know. It was tender, it was moist. It also been cooked slowly through the flesh, but the, the skin had been pan fried quite quickly. They're burnt, Steve. They're all fucking burnt. Have we got any sea bass left? Because Iron Man now. Right, out. come round here, you. Yeah. yeah. He's burnt three pans full. Now, you burnt it. We started with 75 portions of bass. We've got half the dining room not served yet. We've fucked so many bass so early, we've run out. I'm gonna fillet some more bass, but when I fillet these bass, <laughs> when we get them, can we fucking cook them properly? Richard? Yes, chef. Yes? <laughs> Hello? Yes, That's chef. 22 portions here. Listen to me. On top of 75, just under 100 portions of bass. Hello? Don't fuck it. I know you're not a professional chef, you know that, but you are a fucking bright spark. And all I've begged for, for one hour, is just a little bit of fucking intelligence. I'm sorry, mate. Sorry, chef. Did you enjoy your main course? Main course was good. Yes? You sound French. Yeah, I'm French. It's not like Raymond Blanc banging on about how shit our British food is again. No, no. Did you enjoy your bass? I enjoy my bass, mm -hmm. but yeah. where the sea bass was yeah. probably cool. Sorry, probably I'm just cool. nodding off. Two seconds. Uh, did you enjoy your bass? Not as much as the sauce, oh, but... fuck me, another Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it all washed up like that? What have you done to it? Nothing, that's how it was. I'm not all watery, and if you look at them bits there, it just looks like... No, no, what, it's, it's, a very, like. it's a very delicate, sweet sea bass. Can you just put your tongue out for me, please? You've got a fucking ball bearing on the end of it. <laughs> and you expect me to take your palate seriously when you've got all that shrapnel in there? <laughs> Jean-Baptiste, please. Oui, chef. What do they say, JB? Yeah, far too long. Far too long. That's the main complaint. Big, big problem on this one. Steve, that first table you cooked four times. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. What were the results? How many customers out of 50 wanted to pay for their dinner? Uh, 21 are non paying. 21? Yeah, oh, are non paying. Out. Why? Far too long to receive the main course. And as well, some of them find it slightly bland. It's no. a line caught sea bass. Yeah. Roasted in olive oil. Mm. It's the best quality fucking sea bass. 21 customers are refusing to pay for the main course. I don't know why you keep on laughing. I think you find it a joke, don't you? Let's get our priorities right, yeah? Yeah. Fuck the stupid fucking laughing <laughs> sniggering, hey, because it's not you looking good right now. <coughs> yeah. And yes. if you give me those vibes, I'm going to tell you you got those vibes. Whether you don't mean it inside, I just want you to come back. This is important for me as it is for it's you. It's important for me. Yeah? So I want you finishing on a high. Yeah? OK? Are we ready? Yes, yes. yes. Clear down, let's get ready for dessert, yes? Next on the menu, foodie gobshite Janet Street Porter is back in my kitchen. This is fish stew. This fish is a stew. stew. Well, whatever you fucking want to call it, Gordon. And I'll find out what taxi drivers really think of me. You want this cab? Fuck off.
Talking about the F word. Now, Genesee Porter last year beat me in a challenge only because we had a fucking panel of blind tasters no. that were so no. crap. No, people of with, taste and distinction. Uh, obsessed with low fat food, so I lost the challenge. She's back for more, and this time she's got fucking no chance. Right, the rules are simple. The challenger picks their best dish, and I have to try and beat that with my version. The winner is Jeanette. <laughs> well done, Sarah. Oh, get out with you, Sarah. <laughs> oh, no. Sarah won. The winner for today is... Yes. Welcome. Well done. No, no yes. really? <laughs> this time, I'm determined to win. Um, so, don't I've tell me. I've chosen the food. A low-fat soup. This is fish stew. This fish is a stew. stew. Well, whatever you fucking want to call it, Gordon. Right, the thing about making this... Yes. ..is that you make the fish stock uh, the day before, which you get the fishmonger to cut the fish uh, into fillets and remove all the bones, and you just got to get a carrier bag full of bones. Right, it sounds a bit chefy, that you know that. Golden, it's practical. So you make the fish stock the day before by using uh, onions. You sweat onions, celery, yep. maybe a bit of carrot, lots uh -huh. of herbs, thyme, and so on, in a massive pan, the biggest pan you possibly can. Right. And some white wine. Am I, are you agreeing with this or just I'm rebelling just in the background? I'm anyway. listening, but not getting very excited. <laughs> So, Jan is making a fish stew, and I'm doing something sort of almost like a little classic bully bays, but a very quick bully bays, because we haven't got time to do a long winded three and a half, four hour classic French bully bays. So, it's a very simple fish stew, but done with red mullet, fennel, carrots, shallots, a touch of white wine, but the secret ingredient today, of course, is the perno. And that goes brilliantly with the fish. Just like the good old days when they used to have the perno and black. You got no idea the hard time I got after losing against the challenge you last time. You know that. What happened? Did you get your leg pulled down the pub? I mean, no. We're just in the kitchen. They're saying, "Fucking hell, chef! You lost to Janet Street Porter." Your beaten bar woman who will not put up with fancy food, oh, things in me. piles, no, but unnecessary seriously. sauces. Uh, do you know on the last challenge I actually let you win? You know that. Huh? Gordon, that is utter and bollocks. I'm, I'm, you tried your hardest. Over. <laughs> Janet, you're right, my darling. Yeah, I just had a slight disaster. It's all right. Okay. Fish straight in, and I mean really straight in. Guts have been taken out, and straight in. Look at that. Then with the pans, what I'm going to do now is just glaze the pan with a touch of perno now. and white wine. What I'm going to do... So we get all that flavour from the bottom of the pan. It's straight off this fish In my stock. soup. Look, wash out the pan. In she goes. And then... In there again. Nice. Um, no, have you got fish heads there, or prawn heads? Can I have oh. them? I'm going to put them in my soup. Mm, no, I'm not giving them to you. No. <laughs> Fuck off. You shellfish bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's fucking out of order. I'm sorry, cos you asked me for my head, then I'll I give I have it to not you. shot these vegetables as fine as I would have done. Because oh, if I wasn't being finished, filmed on fucking national <laughs> television, I would have whacked them all in the blender. And that's a bit of a top tip for all the sluts at home. You know, we can't chop <laughs> as small as, you know, supersonic Gordon. I'm now putting my fish in. OK, good. How long will the fish take to cook? Well, I'm going to put in first the scallops, because they're the thickest. I like these recipes, you know that? Huh? This is such a simple recipe. I think putting the saffron in is key, because the saffron colours the potatoes. They look fantastic. Yeah. So I'm going to put my little bits of fish in a pan, and unlike Janet, I'm going to cook them separately, OK? Because they cook very, very quickly, because they're small little bits of fish. Are you in favour of my cookbook, MSD? What, to make people send in useless cookbooks? Yeah, unwanted cookbooks that well, they have Well, you know, used... the sad thing is, and you're, yes. you, you've done, said a lot about this, that people in Britain buy cookery books yeah. but don't cook. Yeah. It's like porn. They just go to bed every night. Instead of having a shag, they read a cookery book. <laughs> They it's cook... true, it's cook... I call it cookery porn. They cook... They cook, yeah, they cook for my cookery. I hope it doesn't go on in your household. <laughs> so I what's mean, the do best... Do you have sex or do you read cookery books? Uh, we do both. They do treat it like a dinner in between courses. Read. <laughs> right, Janet. Yes, darling. This is looking fantastic. Yeah? Start Good. getting nervous, please. Yes? How are you Good. doing? I'm doing fine. I can't. 
I'm just doing a bit of sieving. Do you panic when things go pear shaped at dinner parties in terms of when you're I in control? I don't give dinner parties. I work too hard. Wait, wait, do you give dinner parties? Do I fuck? You can't charge them when they come home, can you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give dinner parties. I call on the spur of the moment and say, I'm cooking chicken pie, want to come round? Or, Serious? I'm cooking fish a week on Saturday. Oh, no, not chicken pie with pastry, Janet, surely? Well, people, the gays and the calorie watchers don't eat the pastry. Gays don't eat pastry. You're having a laugh, aren't you? I've got lots of friends that are gay and they love pastry. Well, they're fat gays. <laughs> Janet, you're... <laughs> <laughs> Looks a nice colour. It tastes great. Does it? Be scared. Be scared. Be very scared. You think I'm going to lose, yeah? Two challenges on the trot. You've got another thing coming. Right, soup's almost ready. Can leave them both to simmer now between eight and ten minutes, and then later on, Janet loses. <laughs> Crispy donuts, yeah? So it's a nice yeast batter, yeah? Now, the most important thing with these, yeah, is just keep them submerged under the oil, yeah? Mm -hmm. Out into the sugar. So, with the donut, we're going to serve a really nice slice of apple fritter, yes? Yeah. OK? Yeah. In there like that. Off. And in, yeah? OK? Right, watch. Fresh yoghurt, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maple syrup. And that's a really nice, fine apple puree in there, yeah? Look. Out with your fritter. <coughs> Again. Out. Get it dry, yeah? And look. A slice. Bingo. Finished. Yeah? yeah? OK? A word of warning. These are deep fat fryers. Be <coughs> fucking careful. Be careful. Under no circumstances do we get this and start running around the fucking kitchen <laughs> with that. Stevie, I'm yeah. fucking serious. <laughs> don't laugh. Just for five minutes, don't laugh. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go, guys. Right. Move. Up. Let's get desserts out, yeah? And let's get 50 fucking desserts paid for. I'm so determined to get everyone cooking Sunday lunch, even if that means taking on some of my least favourite people. Taxi! Come on, you miserable fuck. Oh, come on. Taxi, good morning, how are you? Can't get a cab. I wonder why. The London cab driver, what has he done to upset you? Um, I think they are perhaps now the most frustrating drivers on the planet. They give you the, the big one and the, the little one. Golden! On your bike, son. <laughs> no way, mate. Gordon, you want this cab? Fuck off. Fuck the same. A couple of years ago, I upset these guys on telly. And ever since that night, they refused to pick me up. So I'm here to make amends. One's in trouble. He can't cook to save his life. I just hope he's in a good mood, because normally they are miserable fucks. I've always relied on my wife for 10 years. No. So that when I get in from work, I'm one of them, there'd be a nice dinner on the table. I've never been able to take that in, how to cook. I've always ate the dinner and not worried about where it came from or whatever. The only thing you can cook is a sandwich. Or a hot cross bun or something. You can cook, like, bacon and that, and sausage, but not, like, a proper big dinner. I split up with my wife and then uh, I've got the two kids and... I'm forever getting them takeaways. Whenever I've got them, um, they're not eating healthy food. Cool, what a shit hole. <laughs> How old are the kids? Uh, Alfie's nine, Olivia's nearly seven. Uh huh. So, boy and a girl? Yep. And you've never cooked for them? Never. You can't even do beans on toast. Well, a bit well, of toast. No, I can do beans on toast. I'm on about a nice lunch for them or yeah. something like that. Because whatever you do to those kids now is a reflection of you, isn't it? Exactly. Of course it is. And we've got hard work here ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we get into a cab, the meat is always on. Yes. Huh? No wonder you guys are so rich. We've got around a few quid summer. It's going to take a lot to get this likely lad out of the dark ages and comfortable in the kitchen. We'll look up with a dish that's got nine or ten uses. Start off with a shepherd's pie. Lovely. But the most important thing about that is the mince. I'm making a really nice savoury mince. Lovely. Because on the back of that, once mm. it's been used for a shepherd's pie, you can just evolve it. Spaghetti. Spaghetti well, nice, yeah. yep. Then you've got, um, you know, a lasagna, curried mince with some seasoning. Do you have to turn on the stove? Um, I'll do, yeah, I'll have a go. This is what I make, see? Yeah, I'm no, really the, the, used... The, the, this is exactly, I am, Johnny. I am new yeah. to all of this. You're now, making so me... To well. You're making me nervous. Turn the fucking stove on. I'll peel the onions. Yeah, you peel the carrots. 
let the knife do the work. Look, just lift the knife up and just push the carrots down. OK, all, all right. the way through. That's it. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Oh, nearly. Voila, voila. Look at this. So there's only chance I'm working with you in a restaurant. Um, yeah. So far, uh, no, no. Um, the hot plate stands this high, so we will be fucked straight away. We've never made a scene. We've got a little head coming with the hot plate. Right, the garlic. Chop it nice and fine. Nice slices. All in. Good man. Give it a good mix. All the way around. Fresh thyme. Take a little bit like that, yeah? And just... Have a little I've got to try this. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a herb, but it is so, so nice. Mmm. Nice little spice to it, right yeah. at the end, like an added... Like, yeah, but it's mm. nice and mellow. Right, now that's sweaty down, add some tomato puree, half a glass of red wine, and lamb mince. Shit. Without putting it on the floor, Johnny. Now you've got them on the fucking suede Gucci buckles. Oh, nice, uh. <laughs> oh shit, you've got mince on your gold bars, that's Johnny. Right, mate, huh? That's right. Add beef stock and Worcester sauce, then turn down the heat to simmer. Special time with the kids at the weekend. Yep. Yeah, this can be frozen. And that's a way of sort of just getting organised. Yep. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Wow. Aren't they new tiles your dad's just put down? Yeah. So, are they legit? Can we stand on them without <laughs> food and get done for standing <laughs> on solid goods? <laughs> You're making me out of a right dodgy character. <laughs> I thought all cabbies were dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> back yeah. into the pan. And back onto the stove, Johnny, please. Yep, yeah, we'll do. Yeah. And uh, you know what, as well? Go on. I'm slowly feeling more confident. Ready? Yeah. Nice little mash. Thank you. Into there. Now, now just bit. pretend you're almost like icing a cake. Yeah. Nice bit of cheese on top. Mm. Now, pop it in Fantastic. the oven. Fantastic. Hey, Alfie, Olivia. Hey, right, thanks, Mum. See you later. Listen to you. Gordon's here. Hi, guys. Nick and Bucket Glory. Jerry at the bottom. Yeah? Get them involved right now. They've got these memories as they grow up. Yeah. So you are, they are looking absolutely fantastic tonight. And they get to eat properly. Mango. 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 Mm. Mango. Mm. Mango. Who needs takeaways when well, you got that? Fantastic. Mmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. Really? One crucial question. Do you want Dad to cook this again? Yes or yeah. no? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think Mummy would think? Gobsmacked. Gobsmacked. This is how a Sunday lunch should be. 100%. Yeah. But it's only yeah. you can make the effort. You're the only person who can do this, you know that. Well, they're at an age where they're going to remember everything. Thank Don't you silly. very much. Indeed. You've done it. He's never had to cook in his life before. Now he's got no choice because he's got to look after his two kids. And, you know, that Sunday lunch there has to be 10,000 times better than a fucking takeaway for your kids. Taxi. Stevie, four portions away. Coming up. <coughs> Let's go. Table 12, Stevie. They Good brown shit. very quickly. Be very careful. Get your spider in there and keep them dunked under the oil so they yep. cook evenly. Turn this gas down. Mind yourself. Yeah. They are. Bring them over. Oh, come on. And over there you go. Right, listen, listen. You stop, OK? Get rid of that fucking burnt charcoal first. Yeah? You take care of the apples, yeah? OK. Yeah? What really scares me, if we're going to giggle and laugh and fucking make this, it's too dangerous, guys, yeah? Because yeah. I'm going to look a fucking idiot if one of you scolded yourself with first degree burns. Fuck's sake. I'm not fucking running out of dough. We run out of these, we're fucked, by the way, yeah? Serve two each from now on, OK? So we don't run out, guys, yes? They have a gap in the middle, so they've got to get Put them on there. Where's How the sugar, please, there? for the donuts? Well, I'll take two from here and that completes that. Sugar, time. please! Watch your hand. Put it down. Hey, Chef. Too hard. Why'd you put them on the spider like that? That's what fucked them over. Two. Oh, bollocks, man. Two. Yeah, just, I, I need to stop everybody. Can I have some cold oil, please? Do you want me to put jam on then? No. I don't want any jam in fucking anywhere. Richard? Yes, Richard. Chef. Richard, look at me. The reason why Richard. I'm doing this is I can't fucking trust you guys with a pan of fucking hot oil. We know that. Huh? Seriously. Then when I ask you to get serious, it's just a fucking bunch of giggles, yeah? And, you know, I know you're not professional chefs, but I just want a little bit of fucking, hey, safety nuts now. And that's why I'm standing here before some fucker scolds themselves badly, yeah? OK? Finish what you're doing. 
I did, oh. Yeah, no, no, so, hey, I've asked for it about ten times, yeah? yeah. So, I, I don't want to, I don't, I'll cook them, you just serve and put them on the plate. I'm just letting you know, I, let me, let, let me finish, I'm letting you know because you're the best one here. So hopefully those other two get the fucking message, okay? All right. Just put them on the plate for me and send the fucking things, okay? Yes, Chef. Thank you. Let's fucking argue when we start the knowledge okay? Fritters, okay. Mate. Yeah. And for the last three hours, yeah. you've been calling me mate. Well, it's okay. apparent. Okay. Sorry? It is apparent. Why are you so fucking chippy? I'm not chippy, mate. Right, Gordon. Gordon. James, it'd be greatly appreciated for the next 20 minutes. Gordon. Gordon. I'm not your fucking mate. Okay, Gordon. Next on the menu, it's judgment time in the recipe challenge. You know what? Come on, any yes or no? Where's very close? What, what is the seven. score? Three, two. To who? And it's the end of a very, very long night. I felt there was a big fucking monkey on my back this evening because fuck me, was I doing a lot. Welcome back. I can't wait to see Janet Street Porter's face when she loses this challenge. Jean Baptiste, what are you tasting that? Taste what a real fish soup should taste like. Not your finger, Janet. Fucking know where that's been. You just put your finger in my soup. That's all right. It's Jean Baptiste, sure. hurry up yeah. and put Madame Porter out of her fucking misery, please. Yes. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Hello, guys. How are you? Hey, well. see. Definitely not too much herbs. It's quite thick, though. I quite like the herbs. I'm drinking it everywhere. Let's get a bit of fish. Oh, it's fantastic. Really delicate flavours. I don't know. It's not the best fish soup I've ever had, but... I love the look of that. It looks tomatoey, which I like. But you can see the fish in it, whereas the other... I love that. It looks like a pasta sauce. It is a pasta sauce. It's very fish in it. It's got a lot of chilli in it. Right, the spice. OK, where's that lazy frog? OK. He's it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Yeah, what was a very classic, quick, bully base? Maybe red mullet, the one was done out of a sort of was tin a classic, sauce. No, a jar sauce. And my JSP version of a French you, you, classic. You, you know what? Come on, Annie, yes. No, where's very close? Yeah. What, was, what was the score? Three, two. To who? Obviously. Actually, it went for Janet. Oh, my right. God! Yeah. <laughs> we saw! Well done. Yeah, but you're laughing. What did they say? No, no, they said... It's um, too fucking hot, Janet, for God's sake. Oh, I love you. No, yeah, they prefer Janet. But it was delicious. It was meaty, full-bodied, a bit like me. A bit like your fucking butlers. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Now Thanks. get out. Yes. I'll be back Fucking hell. Well Shit. <laughs> right, now time for some posh totty, Trini and Susanna. OK, OK. The pigs have been here a week now. They take a lot of looking after, but the kids are really rising to the challenge. Our duties. Who's going to clean up the poo? Me! <laughs> OK. There you go. <laughs> oh, look, Jack, come here. Look at his little ear, look. She's cut quite badly on her ear. See the top of her ear? What they're doing is they're catching the clip on the fence. So when she's scratching her ears, that clip on the back of her ear is pulling. So it's bleeding. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Gordon. Hello, Christine. So I called in Christine and Kevin to get some advice. The breeders who I bought the pigs from last week. Good to see you. We bought you a little prezi for them. Thank you. What is it? It's a bit of a tree trunk. This hollow tree stump should satisfy the pig's natural desire for a good old scratch. Oh. Daddy. Two seconds. Two seconds. I want to talk to Christine about. There he is. Look, because see the blood where they've been catching? If we don't clean it up, it's going to get infected. Really? So you've done a really good job in spotting that. So we just clean it up with some cotton wool, really? some warm, salty oh. water, which will make them squeal, but yeah. at least it will have the uh, right. antiseptic effect. Okay. And these little piggies squealed all the way home. It may sound harsh, but it really is in the pig's best interests. They definitely won't bite, no? No, no, no. <laughs> pigs squeal. I mean, they squeal as if they're being murdered, and they fight. I mean, they don't want to be turned upside down on their bottom, so um, even though it's, it's not actually that much of a discomfort for them, uh, they don't want to be there. Cool, they don't like their ears being cleaned, do they? I think we should give them a little treat now with an apple or something, don't you? Come on, Jack, feed them nicely, one each. The pigs certainly let you know when they're in any discomfort, so I'm going to make sure these girls live a life of luxury. Are you ready? Yeah, Let's ready go, guys, go. please, yes. 
Just take them off or something. Come on, boys. Richard, James, I should be there and you should be here, yeah? I saw the first fucking pan of donuts, charcoal, yeah? Send the fucking plates, yes? Thank you, last table. That's it. I'm seriously unhappy with that because out of those 50 customers, you managed to cook for one table. Mm. But when I saw the way they were overcooked at the beginning, there's no way on earth you guys are ready to step up and fucking cook donuts. You cooked one table out there. I hope the fuck, okay, they're paying for them. Right. But that was a bit of a letdown, okay? Yep. And thanks for calling me chef. That's all I wanted I from the app. Thank you very much. Clear down. It was crispy and sugary and it was everything I wanted in a dessert. Appearance-wise, I wasn't that impressed. Kind of looked like two brown balls just stuck there. So I prodded it and then nice kind of, the apples kind of came drooling out sort of thing. And I thought, oh, this looks interesting. I love the pudding, but I don't think it does make up the fact that we did wait such a long time for our mains. Uh, that was a tough call. Okay, yeah. Gordon. Okay, um, feedback for the donuts, please. Well, uh, they are quite disappointed about the, the waiting time. Few people think that the donut is a bit greasy. That was a donut, <laughs> so they're supposed to be cooked in fucking fat. How many um, customers are going to pay for their donuts? Okay, we're having 12 non payer for the, for the donuts. There was a fresh apple compote yeah. injected into the donut yeah. before they went to the table. Let's start off with the starters, the salad of tuna. Yeah, brilliant, well done. All 50 customers agreed to pay for that fucking starter. The negative side, we wasted a lot. Yeah. The positive side, they all pay for it. The sea bass, 21 customers refused to pay for it. A lot of waste, a long wait, and dessert, 12 refused to pay. So the total, well done, 117 dishes paid for, yeah? More importantly, you fucking hung in there, yes? The challenge was for you guys to cook for every fucking table and make sure those customers paid. I felt there was a big fucking monkey on my back this evening because fuck me was I doing a lot. I think you could see that. Mm. Richard, would you open your own restaurant now? Piece of piss, ain't it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> piece of piss. Piece of piss. <laughs> well done. Can we get a drink now? Can you get a drink? Cool, fucking Essex boys. <laughs> yeah? Now fuck off and get a drink. <laughs> Thank well, fuck yeah. I wasn't born in Essex. Next week, it's the girls' turn in the kitchen. The fucking kitchen's caked in smoke. We fucking wasted over 200 eggs and fuck all be served. Darren Goff bowls me a googly in the recipe challenge. What could you teach me in one minute how to dance? We did ballroom. Ballroom. Well, you can be my bitch. Cool, fucking hell, hold on a minute. And I try my hardest to teach Jeremy Clarkson how to cook. Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> is full of shit. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm full of shit. <laughs>
you are responsible for the starters, the main and the dessert, and we're going to be working as a team. Yeah? Absolutely. Do not let me down. No, we won't. Ever. Yeah? Right. right, stones on. Get these lit straight away. <laughs> Nicola, what are you doing? I'm trying to light this and making a what? hash of it. You should know exactly how to light the fucking stove by now. No, we did before, but... Somehow. You did before. <laughs> Fuck me, we're in for a tough night, no? <laughs> right, ladies. Right. Yes? There's 12 tables out there. Yeah. And the first course is scrambled eggs. You're going to do one table each. On order, five couples, table six. Five scrambled eggs, five black bream, five gratin savion. Yes, yes chef. chef? Yes, Chef. Right, Kerry, five scrambled eggs away. Okay. On order, four covers, table 11. Four scrambled egg, four black bream, four savion gratin. Yes, Chef. Let's go, ladies, come on. Scrambled egg with wild mushroom is a delicious and easy starter. The brigade have been shown how to make it, and it's simple, but you have to concentrate. Start slicing your bread. How many are you doing there, Kate? Four. four. Yeah, Rebecca, I've I'm asked for four from you as well, but there's nothing on. OK, didn't realise we were doing stuff simultaneous. Listen, ladies, ladies, the only way to do this is separate okay. tables. You're only cooking, on average, four portions well, uh, of scrambled eggs each. Nothing more than that. Okay. Nicola, get doing... your eggs on. But well, I thought I was doing the mushrooms. We're doing one I table see... each. Okay. So Sorry. you've got five portions of scrambled egg. Four portions, five portions, four portions, four portions. Three in a frying pan, don't you? And that's it. We're going to get so much to spit this now. Yes. Taste that, Kerry. And tell me the first thing you taste in your mouth. Quick. It's egg. It's burnt. You can't taste that's burnt. Yeah, I can. Get it in the bin. Let's go. Okay. Rebecca. Yeah. What is that? I know. I'm really. Rebecca. No, 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 no. Leg go. Yeah, no, leg go. Sorry. Um. Really. I know. Okay. Sorry. Um. Get it. In the bin and start again. So the brigade I've got actually think they can hack it. Ah, Kerry, Kate, Rebecca and Nicola. I'm Rebecca. I have quite a lot of friends over for dinner, so I get lots of practice, but maybe more important to me is the aesthetics and perfection of the food. I'm Kerry. I'm incredibly enthusiastic about food. I make my own pasta, I make my own chocolate puddings, I make my own Thai green curry paste. My name's Nicola. I eat out quite a lot, so I know what food should be like, should taste like, should look like. I'm Kate. I'm a very good team player. I'm great at following recipes. I'm brilliant at following instructions, so I think that, given the challenge, I will live up to it. I think we're all very good at taking a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. We will really be pulling out all the stops and we will be so focused. We really like to test ourselves, don't we? So we like things to actually be quite hard because when you come through the other side, you feel like you've really accomplished something. That's our mission. We want to be the best. We will be. We will be. We will be. We will be. <laughs> oh. It's Kerry. Yeah. Bring them here. They're burnt as well. Show me. Lift the pan up. What are we doing? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, ladies, ladies, Kerry, we've been cooking now for 20 minutes, yeah, and fuck all's happened. I'm not here for five hours, and all the customers, you know that. Before I met you guys, I at least thought that you could fucking cook scrambled eggs. Times four. Right now, we'll cook five more portions together, and then we follow suit again. Okay, yeah. So scrambled egg with wild mushrooms. Garlic, shallots. Sauté the shallots and we get our mushrooms in, yes? This is a fantastic way to use wild mushrooms. The richness of the scrambled egg really sets off the earthy flavour of the mushrooms. Toast. I'm happy with that now. It's been grilled, it's ready to roll. Mushrooms are working. Water's coming out of the mushroom, we're getting some colour on there and more importantly we get a bit of flavour on there, yes? I've got five portions of scrambled eggs to do, yes? 15 eggs, roughly 10 in there, yeah, five in there. Knob of butter in each one, yes? And then start, off and on, yeah? Literally moving that quickly. Off and on, yeah, well, I mean, we've got to be that quick. Can I just say, we haven't served anyone yet, you know that? We're just trying to get the timings right. So yeah, double. but it's just, it's just a little bit of thought, Kerry. Okay. I started you off slowly, and then it all went a little bit pear-shaped. Creme fresh, mm -hmm. chives, whisk in. Right. Even now, the scrambled egg is still, still cooking. cooking. Yeah. yeah, that's right. 
just remember one thing. This is not fucking breakfast in bed. These diners are paying for this food, do you understand? So it has to be fucking delicious. Right, spoon. You might think scrambled egg is just for breakfast, but combined with luxurious wild mushrooms, it makes a great starter. Garlic out. Goodbye for the garlic. And then just scatter them around. Clean the plates, please. OK. Right, ladies. Are we happy with that? Yeah. New start? Yeah. yeah. Yes. A bit of composure. Yeah. Hello? And we communicate to one another, OK? Yes, Gordon. Yeah? Right, Kerry, yes. Nicola, let's yes. go, yeah? OK. OK. Ryan, Nicola. Something's burning. What's going on? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking hell. Hey, right, right, ladies. Hey, ladies. No. Oh, fuck me. Gordon? Yes, John Baptist. People are complaining about the, the smell of the burn in the restaurant. What can I do? No, I don't know. I, I tell open you. the window or open the door. Do something. Fucking That's use right. your brain. <laughs> I'm not interested in blaming or anything. I look, we're fucking kitchen caked in smoke. We fucking wasted over 200 eggs and fucking we've been served. Next on the menu, I tried to work out which side Darren Goff bats for in the recipe challenge. So you like dancing, you've got two earrings, you've got a pink t shirt, you play a girl's game. Anything you want to tell me? Hugh Furley Whittingstall sees trouble ahead in my back garden. They seem really quite locked onto the idea that these pigs are here eventually to be eaten. And to be honest, it's Gordon I'm worried about. And will the brigade ever get the starter served to a hungry and restless dining room? I'm excited about scrambled eggs, but right now I'm fucking <laughs> shitting myself. You know that? So it's like a fucking war zone. It wouldn't be so bad if we were fucking cooking people. something complicated. What scrambled people? eggs! <laughs> Sorry about the delay. We're a little bit in the fucking caca, yeah? I mean, beyond belief. This is just turning out to be a fucking disaster, you know. I'm excited about scrambled eggs, but right now I'm fucking shitting myself. You know that? This is not scrambled eggs, this is a fucking... So I know they've been waiting for fucking ages. Hey, it's like a fucking war zone. Wouldn't be so bad if we are fucking cooking something complicated. Scrambled eggs! What can I say, man? It's been an hour and a half since the diners sat down, and two-thirds of the dining room are still to be served their scrambled egg with wild mushrooms. I'm fed up. I'm thinking I fancy going down the pub. We've been waiting too long. Come on, please. On order, ladies, listen. Four covers, table two. Four scrambled egg, four black bream, four sabion. No answer. Yes, Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Oh, ladies. Right. Hello, Nicola. Yeah, You're you part of the team. It'd yeah. be nice if you could answer. I'll call it out again. None of us listening again. Is he just all switched off? I'm ready now. On order, four covers, table I think two. A tiny bit more. Could you just talk a little bit less so when Sorry, I call over hey. you? But you're not listening to I me. Am. I'm, I'm trying, trying to call out an order. But your conversation is far more important. On order, four covers, table two, four scrambled egg, four black bream, four sabayon. Yes, yes, Thank you. Gordon. Yeah, are hallelujah. They, Let's they, go. Nice clean plates, yeah, all the way around, same way. Gentle, gentle. Sorry. Watch your tickets. That's it. We're in a kitchen now, yeah? Yeah, we're not in your fucking shit hot, immaculate little kitchen at home in Chelsea. Let's go, yeah? Tonight's brigade nominated themselves to work in my kitchen because they believe they're great cooks who've got what it takes. Okay. Really Don't really high. Good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, very. Put the spoon down and, and, and put the plate up. Let's go. Good. That's it. It was a nice texture. It wasn't too dry. Had a nice flavour. It was seasoned properly. Yeah. I would have eaten my dog's leg. I was that hungry. Uh, good evening. Apparently, you weren't happy with the scrambled eggs. Do you like your scrambled eggs firm? I yeah. really like them firm. Now, the scrambled eggs are never meant to be firm. That's called an omelette, sweetheart. The scrambled eggs are served slightly runny. Oh, that's a bit better. They had no flavour. I it's tasted really those bland. scrambled eggs. I seasoned those scrambled eggs. What did you eggs. eat before you um, tasted these scrambled eggs? You must have eaten something else because that was bland. There was no flavour in that. You can do better than that. I can see quite clearly you're a lady who likes her food. <laughs> right, I want some food. Unfortunately, food. you've got a fucking bland palate. <laughs> Fuck me. I got the reason for the starters. Yes. Right, ladies, hello, excuse me. Let's go. Okay, so out of 50 diners tonight, 50 diners, we yes. got 33 people who are not paying. Why? Because they're not happy with the food. Is it the time they waited or is it? Time is the way it's been cooked. They don't want to pay. No, no I'm not fucking around now. Now you've got to really seriously pull it back up. Let's make it back. Yeah, and let's win them back with a main course. Okay. Yes? Yes. Yeah? Let's go. Okay. Before I get these girls on the main course, God help me, here's what happened when I tried to get Jeremy Clarkson in the kitchen to cook Sunday lunch. I'm here in the Isle of Man to find out what first attracted the multi-millionaire gobshite to this offshore tax haven. 
Well, some people, when you're like, do you know the really amazing thing about the Isle of Man? You're allowed, by law, to shoot a Scotsman if he's within 20 feet of the beach. And to get him out of the car and into the kitchen to cook Sunday lunch for his wife, Francie, and his three kids. Mm. Well, sorry, late. <laughs> what a nightmare. Hi. First stop, his decidedly penis-shaped house. Anything. My yes. job on a Sunday sure. is to eat lunch sure. at the head of the table, yeah. smoke 500 he, cigarettes and watch a Grand Prix. And surely he drives you to school in the quickest... Um, no, no. no. He's, he's never driven me to school. He doesn't know the way to school. Uh, <laughs> that's extraordinary. <laughs> I got my income tax this morning. Yeah, um, Isle of Man's not exactly famed for its cuisine. No, Can food we... here is fuel. Uh, fuel. Fuel. We're going to change that today and do something quite vibrant, exciting with yeah. lobsters. Yeah. Poached lobster, just done plainly. Beautiful watercress salad, potatoes, and we're going to make an aioli. <laughs> That's the thing around a nipple. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not sure I want to eat somebody's aioli. <laughs> no, no, it's a garlic saffron mayonnaise. Now, you're more confident we're going to get a lobster for lunch. Quietly confident. Yeah? Yeah, always get one. Yeah. It mightn't be very big, but you always get one, at least, yeah. And I put the pots in a couple of days ago. Now, this is what we're going in. The Isle of Man may not be a culinary hotspot, but one thing there is plenty of is lobster. Right, guys, Gordon's got it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, look, yeah. a lobster. A lobster's in there, look. Oh, He's too small. Yeah. Everything else in Clark's life might be huge, but his lobsters are disappointingly small. Yeah. Jack, come here, look. No Sunday lunch on this performance. <laughs> look, uh, say goodbye. He oh, is when you're a bit bigger. Yeah, well, but it doesn't matter because we can just get a boat and go out there. We'll be fine, honestly. Yeah. Trust me. Lunch I'm is out there. It's just okay. just finding it. And like Clarkson, who couldn't catch a cold, real Manx fishermen catch around 30 tons of lobster a year, which is worth £300,000 to the island's fishing industry. Fortunately, Clarkson knows such a man. Is this your boat? <laughs> Do you know what it isn't? What's that smell here? It stinks. Mackerel. Yeah, I feel a bit sick right now, to be honest. <laughs> uh? Gordon gets seasick going over a speed bump. Christ, the man from Wandsworth. <laughs> the salty <laughs> sea dog. <laughs> nice. Great condition and vibrant as well. They're very strong, aren't they? Yeah? Christ almighty. Yeah? Well, that wasn't bad, was it? No. Huh? That's, a good, that's a good haul. <laughs> Quick, have a look. <laughs> Now, look at these. They got, listen, they've got elastic bands. Of course they're real. There you go, look. They're, 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 see? Go and have a look in the rock pools, OK? And we'll get these cooked, yes? Lobster contains more meat per pound than any other shellfish, so it's great for Sunday lunch. So we're just going to boil them very, very plainly. How um, long are you going to do it for? About six, seven minutes per lobster. Do you put vinegar in there? Um, this is sweet. The lobster on its own is just, you know, delicious, and it doesn't really need much enhancement. That instantly kills them. Yeah. And just for sort of what, humane... putting them in boiling water is what? Slow and agonising uh, no, in some the, ways. They're, they're dead by then. Well, if you want to waste time stabbing it in the head, <laughs> you go right ahead. Will you separate three egg yolks for me? Yeah. yeah. And I'll show you how to make the perfect aioli. Have you seen our eggs? These are our chicken. They're called Cotswold leg bars or something or other, and they lay blue eggs. But, and then we've got those that lay brown ones. That's David Beckham. That's Sol Campbell and Paul Scholes. And Rooney? No, because they were named before Rooney, and anyway, we don't have a chicken that stupid. <laughs> and did you want it separating from the shell as well? To make aioli, put the yolks in a blender with garlic, saffron, mustard, lemon juice and olive oil. And blitz. There we go. How do you stop it curdling? A tablespoon of cold water. If it curdles, straight away. Oh, straight, really? Yeah. But, <laughs> that's quite a lot. <laughs> It's not too <laughs> You're not supposed to put that much in there. <laughs> You've got your cat's arsehole on. Mmm, <laughs> 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 that's yummy. It smells amazing. Huh? So fresh. It is one of the great foods, this, I think. This and crab. And see that little line there? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to taste it. That's its shit sack. You never eat that. That's... I've never taken that out! <laughs> <laughs> I 
That, that, unfortunately... I've <laughs> eaten that so many yeah. times! And you know when you think, like, you come across a piece of spinach, you think, Christ, it's a little bit gritty. Yeah, yeah you've just gone through the shit sack. <laughs> right, I've got to get the crap out of these ones now. I am going to do big... this on my own. Stuff that until just ten minutes ago I'd have gladly eaten. Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> is full of shit. Yes, he is. I am full of shit. <laughs> Wouldn't it just... If you run them under a tap, does that knacker the flavour? Yeah, never. Never, never. The worst thing you could ever do is a lobster run under a tap. Yeah. So, when something as simple and as delicious as this, you don't need anything complicated, do you? No. Okay. Poached lobster, a really nice salad of watercress, new potatoes. And that's what really upsets me when you see chefs, the way they overcomplicate a lobster. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Okay, Matilda. A fairly small amount is what I'd suggest. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for Thank alerting you. me to the fact that we've been eating lobster food. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? I've just got Jeremy Clarkson to help me cook Sunday lunch for 11. It doesn't have to be stressful, does it? It's not stressful to just sit down on Sunday lunch. Yeah. And they love it. Head on the plate. Katia, up now. Okay. And eat. I've told you about the no, it's not stressful at all. Finlow's. There's no <laughs> element of stress because you haven't got cat here in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time to draw back the respect to the dining room and make up for the shit that we created with the scrambled eggs. Okay. okay? Let's go. Four bream away. Four bream away. Yes, chef. Okay, how long for your first? One and a half minutes. One and a half. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Now you're starting to look like cooks now. Confident. And Nicola, the stove's clean. Keep it up. The next challenge for my amateur brigade, yes, is the main course. Steamed sea bream on a bed of petit pois bon femme. Black bream. This has to be a bit of a chef's secret. Delicate, sweet, amazing flavour. They taste phenomenal. Fill it. All the way down. Just cut from the tail and let the knife run all the way up to the top of the head and then just come off. It's dainty, delicate, and it tastes fantastic. Bone. Run upstairs and nick your white little tweezers. And these are perfect for pulling out the bones. Score. Clean film. Really nice, fragrant basil leaves. Salt, pepper, olive oil. And place the bream on top of the basil. Wrapping something, lift that one, as it keeps all that flavour in there. And look, you've got a beautiful little parcel. And now that's ready to start poaching in lightly boiling water for eight to 10 minutes. Hot pan, olive oil, baby onions. Quite chunky. Streaky bacon. Into the onions, roll it over. You think of the flavour, the sweetness of the fish and the bacon and onion, how well that goes together. Fresh thyme. Peas. Don't be scared of using frozen peas. The peas just give it that real nice summery freshness. Absolutely delicious. Season. This is so simple. Peas, onions and bacon. The smell of the bacon and onion. Beautiful. Fish slice in, under the fish, and just lift it up. Look at it. The quality of that bream is extraordinary. And these basil leaves, with a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Mmm, fucking hell. Black bream with peas, bomb fam, done. <laughs> one put the onions on, one does the bream. Come on. We've got to work as a team now. Let's go. How long for you, Kerry? Uh, three minutes. Right, Kerry, look up there. Yeah. And have, a, have an insurance policy. Use a timer, but also time yourself, yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, chef. Five more bream in. Now we're going to start doing two tables at once. That's it. Right, bring the water up to the boil and five in. You don't need to unwrap the fish to tell it's done. Just press it. If it's firm to the touch, it's ready. The fish is really thin, so it's not going to take that long to cook. And provided we don't boil it rapidly and we leave it ticking over, simmering, it beautifully steams and poaches at the same time. 
I'm trying that's to get one table moving, moving after the other. Fine. Okay, Kerry. That's fine. That's not even. It's a not a hard. dinner party. It's okay. a restaurant. I can't okay. just think about one fucking table. Let's go. Nicola and Kerry, don't put your peas in until you're ready for them. Yeah, you, know, you, you put them in too early. Go on, throw them away. That's it. Right. Kate, how long before we start plating up? About 10 seconds. Thank you. 10 seconds. Good. Come on, let's go then. Peas and mushrooms on the plate. Yeah? No, no. Look, listen to me. The belly's at the bottom. Silver at the bottom. That's the top. Good. Nice and gently. Come on, plate. Down, Kate, wipe the plate. Service, please. All the same way up, please, yeah? All the same way up. Come on. Sorry. Right, that's your first table out, ladies, yes? Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's go. Have you tasted the peas? I didn't see any of you tasting. No, no. No, we didn't. Nicola, what you experience is what the customers experience. Take the peas and tell me you're happy with them. Come on, ladies. I taught you to taste the scrambled eggs. What your experience is what they're experiencing. I don't want fucking 33 customers refusing to pay for the main course. Yes? See, the peas might be slightly overcooked. Can you check them for me? I, I can just... I I, look, 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 yeah, look, 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 look. Just looking at them, yeah, the are. peas are fucked. They Come are. on, ladies. Start again, yeah? Come on. Five. Come on, please, Kerry. Are the five ready? Because we'll go, we'll go straight for the five. Yeah. yeah. yeah? And put our four more running now. These are the five. The, the other four that are we wasted. four more in. Yes. Yes. Where? No, there's five from before. I'll put four in more now. No, it's fine. I'll do it now. The fish was lovely. The texture of the fish, the taste of the fish is very nice. I would prefer it to have been crispier. I mean, it was a bit slimy. It was actually just very well cooked and brought out the real flavours of the food itself. Right, give me the results. Hopefully, okay. with some fucking good news for the main course. Okay. Come on, come on. Okay, it's not that good, Gordon. 30, oh, 30 people are not paying for the, for the bream. 30? Yeah. That's over half the dining room not paying for the main course. Yeah, I know. What yeah. do they say? Uh, they've been waiting too long. And they, that I can uh, understand. What about the flavour? They, they find the, um, the bream a little bit watery. It's poached, for fuck's sake. It's wrapped I in cling It's a very subtle flavour. Unbelievable. So that's 33 people not paying for the starter, 30 not paying for the main course, I want all those 50 customers paying for the desserts. Yeah? Pull it back and let's get it together. Start clearing down, uh, ladies, yeah? Let's go yeah. and get ready for the dessert, yes? Next on the menu, Darren Goff balls me a googling the recipe challenge. We did ballroom. Ballroom. Well, you can be my bitch. Cool, fucking hell, hold on. <laughs> and Janet Street Porter finds a new diet superfood. Push your fist, make another fist, oh, and push down. Oh, no, Carl, feet. I can hear his heart beating. <laughs> oh, no! Oh. There's no heartbeat there. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, I've never met a Yorkshireman that can cook, and I don't think Darren Goff is going to change my mind. Ready? Ready. Good luck. Let's go. So whoever the recipe challenger is, they get to choose exactly what dish they want to do. And Darren's decided on cooking a cod dish. So what's the secret behind the dish? Well, the reason I'm doing this one is because I don't normally... I don't like fish, believe it or not. Really? And this dish, when I had it for the first time... Yeah. Actually, I enjoyed it. With such an amazing fast right arm, I've never seen a fucking potato being peeled so slow in all my life. Well, I'm doing it left-handed to give you a chance. OK. And what else is in there, Dan? Baked cod with what else? Well, I've uh -huh. got garlic in this, a little bit of chilli. I've got onion in it, potatoes. So mine is a cod provencal with some really nice clams. The first thing, of course, the important thing, is to cook our clams. A touch of nolly fry. And then... Lid on. Cook them quickly so they steam very, very quickly and then take them out and turn them into a colander. When they first asked you to do Strictly Come Dancing, were you a little bit nervous? Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was great fun. And they paid a fucking shitload of money. <laughs> yeah, and they raised a lot of money for charity, which was the Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> what was your dance partner like? Lilia. Lilia was very good, yeah. She's, um... Did you feed her your cod dish? <laughs> I don't think the husband did have been too happy. What could you teach me in one minute how to dance? If I put you on the spot now, one minute. Just, oh, oh. just, just a move. Um, we did ballroom. Ballroom. Well, you can be my bitch. Cool, fucking hell, hold on a minute. Back? Yep. 
and across <laughs> two, three. Now back with the other leg. Hold on, one. Let me be the man, you be the woman. All right, so we, okay. you can with your right leg first. In the going. Two, three. Why are you stepping on your tent toes? Because that's waltz. Oh, is it waltz? waltz. Okay, we need okay. a waltz. So for the proper cell, I've got the garlic, the onions, the red peppers, the yellow peppers, just sweating down nice and slowly, getting really nice and sweet. Then I'm going to reduce the clam stock down. That clam stock will be the base of the sauce. Touch of cream, bring it back up to the ball, and then just drop some really nice sort of basil leaves in there. Are you all right over there, big man? I'm doing well at the minute. Yeah. So you like dancing? Yeah. You've got two earrings, you've got a pink T-shirt, you play a girl's game. Anything you want to tell me? It's what I'm called, and I'm quite comfortable with it. Metrosexual. <laughs> Problem out is going to go at the bottom of the dish. Cod on top. Right, I'm going to come over Hasley now, find out what the fuck you're doing. It's um, a very simple dish. Where does the flavour come from, in terms of, you know... Well, it's... when you taste it, you'll realise. Yeah? Do I have to taste it? Well, I'd, I'd like to think you'd taste it. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish off my cod with a sauce. We're going to have breadcrumbs, and we just top the cod with the breadcrumbs. And then finally, just before they go in, we get some really nice aged parmigiana and just great parmesan over the top. Right, big man, I'm ready. Not be long, mate. How long? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? <laughs> uh, give me a quick run through. What's in there? Well, I put a little bit of chilli in, half a chilli, uh, not too much, some breadcrumbs, uh, I put a squat of parmesan now, uh, then the tomato sauce on top, and then put it in. There you go, mate. Job done. If that pile of shit fucking beats that, yeah, I swear to God, there's something wrong with their fucking taste buds. You know that? Okay, good luck. Let's get it in the other shall we? Yeah? Keep yours fucking miles apart from mine. Here we go, big boy. Yeah? Okay, I'll put mine on the top. You can put yours on the bottom. Good man. Okay, well done. Right, dessert. We've got this wonderful citrus fruit with a champagne savion. I'm going to whip up the egg yolks, yeah? Over a bain touch of champagne in there, yeah? About three tablespoons per portion, and then just whisk away. Now, once you've combined the egg yolks, sugar and champagne, you have to beat vigorously for ten minutes. If it gets too thick, then just add a drop more champagne. Can you right. over-champagne it? Um, depends how much you like alcohol. <laughs> yeah? A lot of nice. I think tonight we should put a lot of alcohol in here <laughs> so we can fucking dummify our customers to pay for fucking dinner. Ten minutes sounds like a long time, but it gives a fantastic consistency to the Sabion. Oranges, just go into quarters. Yeah? Yeah. OK, and the idea now is to create a really nice sort of circle. Yeah, look at them, beautiful. You know, we started off with such a fucking hard time with scrambled eggs. Now, we're going to finish on a high and make sure every one of those customers pay the fucking bill. Now, look at that consistency. Oh, that's Blue torch. nice. That looks nice and it did before. Yeah. So be very, very careful. OK? And it's got to be brown, but not burnt, yeah? Yeah. Look, Just keep it, keep it moving. Yeah. But make sure the savion is not too thin, because if it's too thin, it won't glaze the fruit. Right. OK? What I want to see this time yeah. is communication. Okay. I'll start putting the fruit on, you start whipping. Okay. Yeah? Last week, foodie gobshite Janice Street Porter was in my kitchen banging on about low-fat food. She's convinced the future is low-fat. I think it's bollocks. She's clearly on a mission to prove me wrong. Unlike Gold Top Gordon, I like to watch what I eat, which often means a diet of salad, 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 or boring old chicken. But I've been told there's another meat out there that's even lower in fat. Hello? Auntie Janet's brought some food. No! Don't no! fight! Form an orderly queue. Manners, please! Goats! Do you know that goats have got less fat than chicken, lamb, or beef? So instead of eating chicken, 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 I could have been eating goat. I've missed a trick here. Goats look scrawny enough, but I am a bit sceptical that any red meat can be that low fat. Well, I guess the only way you can really find out is to slaughter it and have a look at what goes on underneath that shaggy coat. So I'm on my way to an abattoir. 
I get all the best jobs and I'm going to be involved in butchering a goat. I'll just have to um, think of who it reminds me of as I'm plunging the knife in. It weighs a okay. ton! I know! Oh! Oh, oh, okay. oh, no, no, I don't want to... Oh, no, 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 no. Have you got a bit of plastic that I can put over that thing's head? <laughs> right, hang on a minute. Oh. Make a fist, push your fist, make another fist, oh, no. and push down. Oh no, I can't, I can hear his heart beating! Oh no! Oh. There's no heartbeat there. Yeah. Pull it nice and hard. Get on with that. OK, come back here. No, I don't You're want to. You're not getting away with that easy, come no, on. I don't want to know about that stomach. <laughs> can we go and butcher this so that I can have some meat um, that I can actually eat? We certainly can, yep. Right. There you have it. That lamb has got so much fat on yeah. it. On the yeah. leg as well, which you never really think of as a fatty part of That's right. the meat. So the goat's that. legs are much smaller. They're much smaller. And the not... amount of fat is incredibly less, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The fat is stored in a goat around the kidneys. This is where most of the fat content is. So when you're butchering it, it's easy to take this fat out, and then when you're cutting the meat up, you're left with meat that does not have the fat running through That's right. the meat That's like right. you do yep. you get on the list. land. Well, the only time I've ever eaten goat, to be honest, has been in West Indian cooking, but I've always eaten curried goat, and as a result, I'd never regarded goat as anything that you can lose weight by eating. In fact, the last time I had curried goat, I had to lie down on the carpet to get over it, because I had carb overload. I want a healthy recipe for cooking goat, so I've asked my mate Harry to help me out. He's a chef at the Anchor and Hope pub in South London, where goat is a regular on the menu. You said it's stronger than lamb. How, what would you say the taste was like? A bit goaty. Goaty? Well, <laughs> look, I know you're a chef and that words aren't your forte. Uh, what do you mean goaty? It's so, tasty. Tasty, but goaty. <laughs> what do people say in your restaurant after they've eaten it for the first time? They love it, I think. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a tree, it's unusual. And I think generally things are unusual in, in Britain. Generally they've been farmed better. Just give me a rundown of possible recipe. I'm going to suggest pot roasting with uh, just a few root veg. Stewing gets all the fat out, so it'll lubricate it while it's cooking, and then you can take that off before you eat. And it. it'll make it tender. That's it, it's going to be so easy. All you do is brown the meat, add the chopped veg, the white wine, cover with foil, and slow roast until tender. God, that meat is so soft, it's unbelievable. Mmm! Oh, it tastes really good. What I'm going to do is take it to a group of people who are watching uh, what they eat, and I'm going to try and convince them that this is very, very good for you. Sit down that way. Super! your meeting, <laughs> have any of you ever eaten goat? No. no. I've been finishing a book and I've been sitting at the typewriter, well, sitting at the computer for months and my arse has gone to <laughs> twice the size. <laughs> so, um, I've been trying to find food that I can eat that's not chicken, 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 mm. chicken. It's boring, isn't it? So, who's willing to try it? Try. Yeah. You're all going to try it because you basically want to eat food, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put some of this veg in. Very nice. What do you say? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Nice. Yeah, really nice. Very tender. Mm -hmm. If you would have given me this, I would have said it was lamb, if you didn't tell me what it was. Yeah. Yeah. For over two, mm -hmm. I've got a vegetarian. Well, that had to happen. That's <laughs> all right. Could you tell yeah. what it was? No, I thought it was lamb. You thought it was lamb. Yeah. What did you think? It was so nice. It wasn't as fatty as lamb. It, sm it yeah, looks and smelled yeah. and tasty, but I find lamb ever so fatty. Judging by my sample audience tonight, it seems to have gone down really well. And you know what? I'm all for it because anything that broadens a careful diet when you're trying to keep your thighs from looking like bridge supports is fine by me.
So this is roast goat. It's been slow roasted, so it hasn't dried out. Upraised. Now, what do you think? Very, very good. Very, um, the texture's quite... It's tender, isn't it? It's quite tender. Now you're eating it. What do you think? I think it's actually tastier than I'd have expected. Yeah, if you serve that on a Sunday roast, yeah, you, people would think it was that. Very tasty. Service, table seven and table six, please, yes? Okay. Gordon, I know you're really busy. Don't you worry. Can I um, offer you a piece of goat? Yeah. yeah. It's delicious. It's so, isn't it? It's fucking it delicious. It's yep. slightly gamey, no? Yeah. It's like lamb, yep. but lamb that's had a more interesting life. Mm. Well, the flavour is extraordinary. It's really um, good. How would you cook it? You so braising like that or roasting? Yeah. Um, I'm fed up with seeing goat in a curry because I think it's a lot more flavoursome without having to... You know... I know also the curry takes away from the flavour of the meat itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely Do you right. think the people in your restaurants would eat goat? Yeah. 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 I think they would. I'll tell you what, though. I wish the fuck you were in here this evening, you know that. Uh, I know. All yeah. I know is I've waited for my food. How long did you wait for the starter? Truthfully. How long does it take for paint to dry? Serious. And if you're in a restaurant... Outside the F word, what would you have done in a restaurant that kept you waiting that long for fucking scrambled eggs on toast? I walked out. Restaurant? You walked out. Yeah, walked out. And basically, scrambled egg isn't very hard. Don't look at me like that with poison. Look. I, it wasn't a poison leg, um, I was just listening to you. I can't scrambled egg. Yeah, right, right. I mean, I might. Don't beat them up, they're fine. I promise you now, we're getting there. We're pulling it back. But that is very nice. Okay, yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. That's nice. Back on there again. Touch more champagne. Get a little bit too thick. There you go. Up. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Don't stop. Good. That's it. Excellent. There you go. Try and keep it in the pan. Up. Service, please. Not too far out. Nice. Keep it in the centre, but be accurate when you put it on there. It's really important please to clean the pan. Absolutely. Because you're going to glaze shit on there, yeah? Come on. That's it. Round. Not. Nicely, 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 nicely. Come on. Come on, ladies, let's go. Thank Start blow torching, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It's really important you don't get the drips around the plate before you start glazing, Rebecca. Yes, come on, ladies. Good. Clean the plates before you glaze. <laughs> Kerry, will we put that blow torch down because you're going to set us all on fire or your fucking hair on fire? You rest une table de quatre, c'est ça, non? Allô, Jean-Baptiste, one table four left. What have we got there? What have we got left? Three? This is it, we're finished. Yeah. Oh, my God, Hell. that would never end. Table three, yes? Yes. Let's go. Go, please, let's go. Oh, dear, okay. Yeah. It's fine, it's going fine. Clear down, yes, and then we'll find out who's paying, okay. yeah? Okay. Yeah. And who's not paying. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> now, time for the big fat Yorkshireman. To face the music, <laughs> Chunky Monkey. Ladies first. Yeah. I think it's perfectly seasoned. I love it. It's beautiful. No, I really like the fish, but it could have been a lot more flavour. Mm. Yeah, no, like no, there some sort of flavor. spice or something to get that. That looks like a bit of bacon on the top, but it's not. It's, what it's what melted is cheese that? with tomato puree or something. The potatoes are very hard. I don't. They're far too hard. You couldn't even mash those potatoes. No. OK, JP. OK. Guys. Now, don't look at me like that. When you've got those little fucking sad <laughs> French puppy eyes on, yeah? No, nothing sad, actually. Fuck off, OK? Interesting comments. Um, but uh, one dish is better than the other one. Of course one dish is better than the other one. Yes. And the one they prefer is... Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey. Never only, mind. About only... fucking time. Oh, you know that? What a big boy. Well yeah. done. Thank you. Yours, look, yours you. look good, I'll give you Thank that. You. Yours yeah. look good. Now fuck off out the kitchen now, yes? I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Yes! Next on the menu, Jack and I have a bit of a disagreement about the pigs. I want you to start understanding that they're here yeah. because we're going to eat them, yeah. not because they're becoming our best mates. Yes. And the brigade get the long-awaited results for dessert. Give me some good news for the desserts, please. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to turn my pigs into a spectacular main course for the restaurant. But these little porkers deserve to live a little bit first. Waking up. Yeah. 
Our eyes are closed. <laughs> A whole apple just for you. <laughs> um, I think Jack is starting to become a little bit sort of smitten. Back. Look at his cheeks, Jack. His cheeks. There you go, man. The kids have, you know, pretty much, you know, fallen in love with them. Jack was snuggling up with them the other day inside the pen. I came home last night from work and sat in there and fed them an apple. So, um, you know, we're becoming very familiar with them. Jack, are you getting attached to these pigs? Uh, yes. Do you like them? Yeah. Right, listen. Yeah. Listen, we've got to look after them. Yeah. Okay, but I don't want you falling in love with them. No, no, but you're caring for them in a way that you're you're getting attached. Do you want to sleep yeah, with them? Pets. No, mate, they're not pets. The best thing about having pigs yeah. is uh, when they grow up, um, we can ride them. Oh. <laughs> I want you to start understanding that they're here yeah. because we're going to eat them, yeah. not because they're becoming our best mates. <laughs> With just oh, five weeks to slaughter day, I'm really well. concerned the kids are getting too attached. Oh, so I've asked Hugh Fernley Whittingstall so. for his expert advice. Well, look. They're very nice pigs, aren't they? Hello. Hello. Beautiful. Hello. Can we have a scratch? <laughs> that's... Where's um, the other one? Uh, that's Trini, and this is Susanna. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, did, well, I, did, I told you, you know, not to name them, I know, didn't I? Know, I, I, I that, that's my own personal names, but yeah. the right. kids have sort the kids of... kids have got other names. Well, there's some bangers and mash, bacon and egg, and it's like, oh, God. What do the kids think's happening here? Do they think they've got two new pets, or do they think they've got some very interesting dinner coming in a few months' time? The girls have started to sort of come to terms with eating them, but Jack is slightly more... It's more sentimental yeah, about them. Yeah, very sentimental, and he's, like, laying down in their bed and... Giving them cuddles. Giving them cuddles, because they cuddle all the time. I think it's important that they don't lose this connection between pigs and meat, and the reason they're here is for food. I mean, do you, do you talk to them about the different parts of the pig and, you know, what's going to be used for what? And, you know, if you refer to the back legs as hams... Yep. Rather than legs. legs they yeah. are the hams. The hams is a good idea. And the loin. We're going Let's to get the pigs. To mark out where the cuts of meat are on the pigs, the pigs we're going to use tape. Let's divide up like the butcher's cuts. Yeah. And we got a ham. There's a ham. Right. Between the loin and the man. But getting a pig to stand still isn't that simple. <laughs> That's an interesting cut. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> look, look, look. Susanna's not very happy having tape on her, is she? Um, but why did we need the tape? Because we're trying to think of cuts. They're not called legs anymore. They're called hams. Here you go. OK. You mean the ham you eat? That's right, the ham you eat, of course. We're going to do right. it on your daddy instead. Ready? <laughs> so, right. <laughs> OK. Then, see? That's the ham. That's the shoulder. That's where the streaky bacon comes from. That's called the hand. OK, where's your daddy's streaky bacon coming from? Yeah. But underneath, underneath, yeah. where's his snout? Where? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got it now. We understand that cuts, yes? Yeah. The lesson's paid uh, off. Jack is now thinking about his stomach. Typical oh, Ramsay. Clothes, yeah, they've got to grow big so then we'll get more sausages and bacon and... <laughs> they seem really quite locked onto the idea that these pigs are here eventually to be eaten. And to be honest, it's Gordon I'm worried about. Give him, give him a little scratch on the belly. Good morning, girls. Hey, come on. Hey. It's bloody tough having them in the garden, known full yeah. well that their days are numbered. Well, the first but... pigs I had at River Cottage, and I had two pigs like that, sent them both to slaughter at the same time. Really? And it was very emotional. You know, I, I yeah. was on the verge of tears. The minute I saw them, I did fall in love with them. There's no two ways about that. I'm enjoying the moment, but I don't know if I'm looking forward to the slaughter, to be honest, because um, they're quite fun to have around. You could taste the champagne. It was still light. It was nice and smoky where it had been kind of burnt on top. It was lovely. The sauce on top was gorgeous with that little torch effect. I love it when they burn it a little bit. Gorgeous. But so I would sum it up as disappointing. An upscale version of tinned fruit with bird's custard. OK, JB, give me some good news for the desserts, please. 41 people will undertake for the desserts. 41? Yes. Why so many? Uh, once again, waiting time. 
and some people were expecting something a bit more elaborate. The time issue, I can understand. Yeah, definitely. Simple and delicious. I mean, it was just straightforward, uncomplicated, and fucking simple. Ladies, to be honest, the amount of time you kept them waiting for the starters was a joke. Yes, we got a little bit faster in the main course, but they shouldn't wait for something so simple. Scrambled eggs on toast, that's what it was, with fried mushrooms. Not good, not good enough. So starters, 33 customers wouldn't pay for them, 30 customers wouldn't pay for the main course, and 41 customers wouldn't pay for the fucking dessert. So in total, there's 104 plates weren't paid for. That means only 46 plates across the board were paid for tonight. We went to Helen Bank and we had a roller coaster up and down. It was a fucking struggle. And I'm telling you now, you're not coming back. We don't want to. We don't want to. You can pay us to come back. On next week's show, Dermot O'Leary takes me on in the recipe challenge with his Irish stew. That's lovely, it's just not Irish stew. That's a curry to all intents and Oh, fuck off, will you? I've come up with a new way to flavour the pork. I think it'd be nice just to feed one of them some really nice beer and just look at the difference in flavour when we come to cook it. And there's a new amateur brigade in the kitchen. And it's not just their souffles that are getting overheated. What do you want me to say? Well done for fucking the I don't want you to say. I want you to say something once, Mr Ramsey, and then shut the fuck up.